Before we start with today's story, I have to make mention that there is a big scam going on from Ledger or from people who are impersonating uh, accounts at Ledger. And they are sending out text messages and emails and everything else for people to go to their sites, download some type of software, or asking for their private keys and or their mnemonic phrases or their passphrases. So if you see something like this, just know that it is a scam. Do not give anybody anything. Your private keys stay private. Your mnemonic phrases or your recovery phrases are for you. So do not fall into this and lose everything. These are from unscrupulous scammers that are trying to take down a good thing. So also, if you are in the market for a Nano Ledger, it's fantastic. I got four myself. I keep all of my different assets on there. You can pick them up today for 20% off. All you have to do is just when you add it to your cart and click on checkout, all you have to do is type in digital asset news, click apply and 20% off. To get the official link, just look in the description of every one of my videos. There's going to be a link that goes to Nano Ledger. Looks something like this right here. And off you go. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite sized pieces. Today, we've got some good stuff, some positive and bullish news. First up, Zcash is on its way to its first halving, and it's going to happen on 18th of November. Also, fantastic news Cardano releases the Gogan roadmap and demos the ERC20 converter on their show. So I'm gonna talk to you how important Gogan is and really how much more important this ERC20 converter is to you, me, on top of all the different industries that have already built on Ethereum and ERC20. Also, Bitcoin is just four days away from historically bullish 10K price record. Why this is important and why it could lead, based on data analytics, to a $100,000 Bitcoin. However, I don't think it's going to happen. And there's a story that correlates what I'm talking about as Bitcoin suddenly slides 4% as Bank of America predicts a 20% stock market crash. And we'll get into all that, but first take a look at what's going on in the market. So today is October 30th. It is about 1 p.m. Texas time. And what do we have going on? Well, Bitcoin has indeed slumped just a little bit and it's at 13.5. Not too bad uh, on the predication of a potential stock market crash 20%. So we'll see how that works out. But it is up 4.3 for the week. Ethereum is down 2.9. Tether's 0.3. XRP is down as well. Bitcoin Cash. You know, really we should just talk about what's up because it seems like there's nothing really too fantastic. 7% down for crypto.com. Ouchie. Uh, hey, Leo tokens up 0.4. That's fantastic news. Just kidding. It's 0.4. Filecoin down 11%. This project looks so good. I don't know why it keeps going down. It's all about allocation of resources and uh, paying next to nothing for cloud storage. So if File can, Filecoin can do that from anywhere, I don't see the problem unless it's just uh, an issue with price action. Dash is up 5%. That's good. Zcash is up 3.3, which we're going to get in that right now. And I'm pretty sure I know what that is. And then ugh, Celsius Network is up 1.4. You know, this is the day I, my dollar cost average day is for Celsius and Theta. And of course, Celsius is the only one to go up. What a bummer. But uh, over the next months and years, I'm going to be investing heavily into Theta and Celsius. Anyhow, let's jump into today's top story. While this isn't a very top story about what's going to happen, but I just want everybody to realize why Zcash could be pumping or dumping in the next uh, roughly two and a half weeks or so. So the, this is from NiceHash.com, which is a little countdown for Zcash. If you don't know, Zcash is a fork of Bitcoin. It is a privacy coin. And I always thought privacy coins were dead uh, until Gemini came out with the announcement a couple weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, that said they're allowing people to use private transactions to send to anybody any amount and for whatever they want to do with it. And this was uh, after years of working with a New York financial institution to get them to actually do this. So uh, when I saw this, I was surprised. I thought they were all going to go away because other exchanges were delisting these privacy coins. But here we are. So uh, Zcash, just remember that November 18th is the date of when it's going to uh, have a halving. Now, it could be a little bit sooner. It could be a little later, depending on how many blocks get mined. But um, I think what usually happens with, with halvings is that there's a, a huge amount of, of hype around it. And as we get closer, it starts to increase, increase, increase. And afterwards, it dumps or it dumps right before, uh, depending. So if, if you're a trader, this is a great opportunity. Uh, if you're looking at things to invest into, if you believe in the project, sure. Uh, but just be aware of that's why the price will probably go up over the next two and a half weeks. That's what I want to say. Just want to be, uh, you know, transparent and show everybody what's going to happen. So let's jump into what I think is the big news item of the day. So 
Cardano releases Gokin roadmap and uh, demos an ERC-20 converter. This, to me, is huge, and I'll tell you why. So what is Gokin? Well, Gokin is going to allow uh, Cardano to become a full-platform smart contract. So Cardano just released the Gokin roadmap yesterday, uh, and it talks about how most parts are scheduled for delivery at the end of February 2021. And to me, I'm impressed. Uh, I know some people don't like it. They're like, "Oh, it's taking so long." But look, I was been a, I've been a big critic of uh, Cardano for all the all the you know latency that they have, all the waiting, all the you know just how long it actually takes to actually get things done. And uh, I've been very critical. But uh, looking at all the different DeFi products that have crashed and burned nowadays, I tip my hat to Charles Hoskinson and the rest of the team because I'm like, "Hey, good job, not screwing up." Uh, they're doing the right things. They're taking the necessary precautions. And I, for one, as an investor, I'm very happy what's going on. So when I hear that this is going to happen in February, well, that's four months away. So in all honesty, I'm like, you're going to beat Ethereum. So, I mean, that Ethereum 2.0 roadmap could take a year, maybe more. So we'll see how that all works out. But uh, I'm uh, extremely happy uh, with what, what, what is going on here. So with Gogan coming out, Cardano, there's going to be a shift from focusing on transactions just alone to becoming, like I said, a utility platform for partnerships, enterprises, and commercial applications that can be used for complex operations that will define the era of decentralized finance. And, and I, for one, am happy this is actually going to happen. So that's not all. I mean, just on top of DeFi, uh, the addition of transaction metadata to the Cardano blockchain using the Atala product suite is expected to see many use cases from decentralized identification or DIDs to, listen up VeChain, tamper-proof supply chain records. So look, you're gonna have smart contracts, you're gonna have DIDs, supply chain records, going to DeFi, you're also gonna have this ERC-20 converter. So everything that is built on Ethereum right now, you can just easily, like with a snap, uh, just transfer over to Cardano. And I'm going to show you a video right right now. It's like a minute long, and it's super simple. So if I was Ethereum, uh, I mean, I'm an Ethereum holder. Again, I think Ethereum will still do well, uh, but I hedge my bet, and I put uh, a good amount into Cardano. So one of these guys is going to win. That's all I can tell you. Anyhow, here's the demo, uh, and it just shows uh, AGI tokens uh, transferred from the Met a MetaMask wallet in the Cardano blockchain. So I'm going to link this in the description. It's a uh, very long video. It's a two, almost two and a half hours. It's a October Cardano monthly update. It's a lot of great information. I just don't have time to watch all that. So uh, I'm just going to give you the, the uh, 70 second snippet of what they're going to do as far as converting the ERC-20 token. So let's just take a watch. In the second case, where we are locking the token on the source network and uh, releasing it on the destination network. The token that we are going to convert is SingularityNet. And the first thing that I need to do is authenticate on Web3. Uh, I'm going to do that with my MetaMask account. And when I'm connected, I'm going to see all the tokens that I have on the account. And I can see the balance that I have for AGI. Now I'm going to select all the tokens that I have. And I'm going to paste in the address. Uh, MetaMask is going to ask me to confirm. I'm going to confirm the transaction and the transaction is going to execute. When the transaction is done, I'm going to get the message that it was successful. Let's wait for it. Yeah, uh, the migration was successful. And what I can see here is that I have eight tokens on Cardano. So if you're used to using MetaMask, and you should be if you're using uh, Uniswap or SimpleSwap, you just saw the fastest transaction of all time. Not of all time, but you know what I mean. That's simple, that's fast, that's quick. And if you're a just a pure Ethereum holder, you got to take a step back and go, wow, is this going to be the new thing? Anyhow, but it's not all bells and whistles and rainbows as some people are kind of upset. But look, it says right here, this is not limited to utility tokens alone. You can also do non-fungible tokens, security tokens, and a number of other instruments that have value. And then there's a quote from Charles Hoskinson. One thing about Charles, I will tell you this, that guy has no lacking of confidence in Cardano. Every time you hear this guy, it's gonna be great, gonna be fantastic, it's gonna blow up the water, it's gonna be the next best thing. 
So, hey, tip my hat to him. I mean, at least the guy knows exactly where he's going. But this is the thing that I thought was odd. It said a few members of the community were disappointed by the extended timeline of the rollout and expect this to reflect in the market as well. Cardano was trading at 90 cents or 9 cents, excuse me, at the time of writing, but it's down 8.7 from yesterday. So here's all I got to say. Uh, please, 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 please. If you have weak hands and, and they're getting so so uh, sore and heavy from holding these bags, just, just drop it right now and sell all your Cardano so someone like me can pick it all up and just keep selling because that'd be fantastic as the price goes down. Uh, of course, I'm just kidding, but I will be buying. So let me just think of the comment section. Is this a big deal or it's just uh, not, a, it's a big nothingness? Let me know. Let's move on to the next piece. So next up, this is a twofer. Uh, Bitcoin just four days away from historically bullish 10K price record. The problem with that is that we are four days away from the presidential election. So we'll see exactly how that works out. But what this is, is all about data and analytics. So Bitcoin has spent 100 days above 10,000. That's pretty good. And they're talking about if it history repeats itself, we're in the uh, market. It could be an astronomical bull run, but uh, we'll see. And it's all about this analytics from CoinMetrics. And it states after trading above certain price points, specifically for 100 days, Bitcoin gained an enormous amount of magnitude for the market. For example, ever saying above 10 bucks for 100 days, it took only 122 days, four months roughly, for Bitcoin to reach 100 bucks. Now, after cracking $100 or 100 days above 100 bucks, then $1,000 happened in just two days. So imagine that. It's been four months, you put 100 bucks into Bitcoin, and you 10x yourself in four months. That is insane. So looking at the difference between 1,000 and 10,000, the time period was longer. It was a whopping 150 days, so we're looking at five months, to crack five figures after trading at four. Well, what a bummer that is, right? This is a, an analytics resource called The Tie, which is Josh Frank's company. This guy is everywhere. So The Tie is a data analytics company. They provide the services for Alex Maschioli and his product called Trade the Chain. If you haven't seen it, there's a link in the description, and there's a video I did about it. It's about 25 minutes long or so, and it just talks about how to pretty much dominate the market through sentiment analysis and news and alerts that you can get on your phone. So just watch the video and you, you figure out what I'm talking about. But anyhow, to finish this up, the second longest period for Bitcoin uh, from uh, the 100 days was in December of 2017 when Bitcoin surpassed 10,000 for the first time just days before it increased by almost 80% to set its all-time record high of 20 grand. Third was in August 2019 when Bitcoin traded within a 20% range for nearly four months. So here's what it all comes down to. And the rest is just boring. What it all comes down to is this. If we can keep 100 days, which I think we're going to, depending on this election, uh, we're going to see some massive fireworks. And uh, I, for one, cannot wait. So this is what I'm talking about, though, as far as like the wet blanket. And the wet blanket is Bitcoin. It states suddenly slides 4% as Bank of America predicts a 20% stock market crash. Now, for us in the crypto market, 20% is a Tuesday. That is no big deal. But for the traditional market, that is like the end all be all. The sky is falling. I have to jump off my roof. That doesn't matter for us. However, if it does uh, crash a little bit, fantastic, because all those traditional players that have come from the traditional market into cryptocurrency will start selling, aka C. Portney from Barstool Sports, who sold at the slightest amount of losses. And again, if you do that, I will thank you uh, tremendously, and I will hold your weak hands as you drop those bags so that I can buy them. So what's going on here? So with five days left to the US presidential election, Bank of America suggested a 20% drop is possible. Why, why, why? Well, according to BOA of economists led by Michelle Mayer, the election result is not the biggest threat to equities. That's not it. What it is, it is whether a contested election occurs uh, that could cause the markets to rattle due to the uncertainty because investors do not like uncertainty. You know who does like uncertainty? Traders. I'm not a trader. If you are a trader, hats off to you. This could be a fantastic opportunity. The markets could still rally regardless of who wins the election. I've always said that. I think it's if Trump gets elected, there's going to be a little bit of a bump, but the market's still going to go down. If Biden gets elected, it'll slump a little bit, maybe a little pump a little bit, but then it's going to go down because, again, you can't print this much money. You can't have this many problems. You can't see businesses going out of business. And, of course, the fiat is on fire. 
That's why Michael Silver and Michael Strategy got out of it. I just don't see how the market's going to stay up regardless of who wins. But a contested election really could lead to a massive slump, slump more so than a non-contested election. So landslide victory for the Trump or Biden and rapid election conclusion would likely be welcomed, while a severely contested election could see risk off and drive 10-year rates material lower. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, it's going to be hotly contested. You're not going to see uh, a bunch of uh, people just go, oh, it's going to be okay. And this guy won. It's all right. So the only way this could happen is if Trump wins by a little bit or a lot. It, that part doesn't matter. The problem that's going to be an, an issue is if Biden comes in closely, I don't even care if he wins in a line slide because there's still going to be hotly contested debates, especially with all the absentee ballots and then talk about fraud. So it doesn't matter if Biden wins a little or Biden wins a lot. It's still going to be contested, and that is going to lead to a lot of uncertainty. That's going to lead a lot of traditional players start to sell, and the ones that are here are going to sell. And that's where you and I come in because we have ice in our veins. We know where this market is going, and we are waiting for the weak hands to drop their bags. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section, and that is it for today. So first, I want to say thanks for sticking with me throughout the whole video. I really appreciate it. If you don't know, uh, I have this handy dandy exchange and wallet fees spreadsheet. It goes everything from everything that I've ever used from Coinbase, which I don't do too much anymore, the Kraken, Celsius, Voyager, my one, two, three punch, Gemini, KYC, not me, SwiftX. Hey, if you don't know, if you're in Australia, Swift TX, SwiftX, that's a great place because they give you your own customer service rep. Is that crazy? That's crazy. Coinbase, hope you're listening because that's how you do customer service right. I don't know anything else about it. Seems like the rates are pretty uh, competitive. So if you're in Australia, check them out. And then uh, something like Uniswap, SimpleSwap, Abra, all those things, right? You can find the link in the description below. Looks something like this. And as you know, as our next bull run comes up, just be aware that you should have as many options as humanly possible. Now you can use my links or not, but if you use the links, you get between $10 and $25 when you sign up. So again, that's it for today. Thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see you on the next one.